Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm really glad you're here. So today we're diving into something I've personally been curious about for a while. And uh, maybe you have too. Which ESP32 board is actually the fastest? Like, is it the good old classic ESP32? Or the tiny but mighty ESP32C3? Or maybe the newer, flashier ESP32S3 with all that extra power? Well, I finally ran some real-world tests and uh, the results might actually surprise you. So I've been using these ESP32 boards in all kinds of projects, like Bluetooth audio stuff, sensor-based systems, and even a bit of AI experimentation here and there. And honestly, there's always been this question floating in my mind, which one is actually faster? Like, which board gives us the best performance for the price? So uh, in today's video, I thought, uh, why not test it out and, you know, share my experience with all of you. Now I'll be doing some basic speed tests. Nothing too crazy. Just to get a feel for how these boards stack up. Of course, this is just the beginning. I mean, there are a ton of other tests we could run, but this should be a pretty solid starting point. But first, before we jump into the actual code and testing part, let's take a quick look at the specs of all three boards. Alright, so first up, let's talk about the type of CPU each board uses. Uh, this part is super important because it really affects how fast the board can process instructions and handle tasks. So the classic ESP32, that one comes with a dual core extensor LX6 processor. Uh, that means it's got two cores, which is great for multitasking and running multiple things at once. Now the ESP32C3. This one's a bit different. It uses a single core RISCV processor. It's newer in terms of architecture. And yeah, it's more efficient and power saving. But uh, it's not really built for raw speed. So don't expect lightning fast performance here. And then there's the ESP32S3. Uh, this one packs the newer dual core extensor LX7 CPU. It's kind of like the next gen version of the classic ESP32's processor more optimized, more powerful, and just overall better for handling heavy tasks. All right, let's talk about clock speed. Basically, it's like how fast the brain of the microcontroller operates. So both the classic ESP32 and the ESP32S3 run at 240 megahertz, which is pretty fast for most embedded tasks. The ESP32C3, on the other hand, is a bit slower. It runs at 160 megahertz. Now you might be thinking, okay, so higher megahertz means faster, right? Well, not exactly. Uh, speed isn't just about the raw clock frequency. It also depends on the architecture and how efficiently the chip handles different tasks. For example, the ESP32 S3 with its newer architecture can sometimes outperform the classic ESP32, even if the megahertz is the same just because it processes things more efficiently. Okay, so if you're working on something that deals with decimal numbers, like, say, sensor data, audio processing, or even basic AI stuff, then you're going to need what's called an FPU, or floating point unit. It's basically a special part of the chip that's designed to handle floating point math. And it does it way faster than using plain software code. Now, both the classic ESP32 and the ESP32S3 come with built-in FPU support, so they can handle those kinds of tasks pretty smoothly. The ESP32C3, on the other hand, um, doesn't have a hardware FPU. So yeah, it ends up doing all the floating point calculations in software, which is like a lot slower, especially if you're doing something that's math heavy or happens repeatedly. Now let's talk about memory. Because like more memory usually means your code can do more things without crashing. So in terms of SRAM, which is the fast working memory the chip uses while running code, here's the deal. The classic ESP32 has around 520 kilobytes of SRAM, which is honestly still decent for most projects. The ESP32C3 has a bit less, roughly 400 kilobytes. So yeah, you'll need to be a little more careful with memory-heavy tasks. 
and the ESP32-S3 gives you around 512 kilobytes, which is pretty close to the classic. But, and this is important, many S3 boards also come with 2 megabytes of PS RAM, which acts like extra RAM for bigger tasks like buffering audio, images, or running AI models. Now for flash memory, that's where your code and data like web files or configuration settings are stored. Most of these boards, ESP32, C3, and S3, typically come with 4 megabytes of flash by default. Let's talk about USB. And honestly, this is way more useful than people usually think. So starting with the classic ESP32, um, it actually doesn't have native USB support. That means it can't directly talk to your computer over USB by itself. Instead, it relies on an extra chip uh, like a CP2102 or CH340 to handle USB to serial communication. So yeah, in this case, uh, USB is kind of external. It's there but not really part of the chip itself. Now moving on to the ESP32C3. Uh, this one's better in that department. It has built-in USB-C DC support, which means you can just plug it directly into your computer with a USB cable. No extra chip needed. You can upload code, use serial communication, and even make it act like a USB device, like a keyboard, mouse, joystick, all that cool H8 stuff if you flash the right firmware. And then we have the ESP32-S3. And this thing takes USB to the next level. It supports USB OTG or on the go, which is kind of a game changer. Uh, so what's the big deal? Well, not only can it act like a USB device, just like the C3, but it can also act like a USB host, meaning with proper power, you can connect stuff to it, like a USB flash drive, a keyboard or mouse, even another microcontroller or peripheral. All right, now let's get into the benchmarks, the real tests. I didn't want to go too technical here. Instead, I picked three simple and practical tests that actually reflect the kind of stuff we do in real world projects. Uh, test number one is loop iterations per second. So this one's just a basic speed test. How many times can the chip run a simple loop in one second? It gives us a rough idea of the raw processing power. No fancy operations, just pure speed. All right, let's quickly upload the code to all three boards one by one and note down the time taken. All right, uh, so here are the results. It was basically just counting inside a while loop for 1000 milliseconds. Now, as you can see, uh, the classic ESP32 actually comes out on top in this test, which is honestly kind of impressive, especially for a chip that's been around for a few years. The ESP32 S3 also does pretty well, but it's just slightly behind. That could be due to some differences in instruction timing or maybe a bit of extra overhead in the architecture. And finally, the ESP32C3 comes in last, which to be fair is kind of expected. I mean, it's a single core Risk V chip running at a lower clock speed. So it's more focused on efficiency than raw power. Uh, test number two is floating point operations per second. Uh, now, this one's about math. We're running things like sine, cosine, and multiplication, operations that show up audio work and even basic AI logic. Let's go ahead and upload this test to each board, just like before, and see how they handle these floating point tasks. So just like before, we uh, run the test for one second and count how many floating point calculations each board can. I also added a simple checksum just to make sure like the math is actually being done and the results aren't just random numbers. And now here are the results. 
This time, the ESP32 S3 takes the lead. No surprise there. Thanks to its faster and more efficient floating point unit, it handles these kinds of operations really well. The classic ESP32 still holds up nicely. It's not far behind and performs respectably, but once again, the ESP32 C3 struggles a bit. And that's expected. It doesn't have a hardware FPU, so it's doing all the floating point math in software, which just isn't as fast. Uh, test number three is matrix multiplication. Okay, now we're stepping things up a bit. In this test, uh, we're multiplying two 50 by 50 float matrices and storing the result in a third one. Uh, this kind of operation is super common in areas like graphics, signal processing, and especially machine learning, where matrix math is everywhere. We're not using plain numbers either. We fill the matrices using sine and cos functions, functions to simulate real-world data. Then we run the full matrix multiplication, and at the end, we just print the time taken in milliseconds. So we get a really clear idea of how fast or slow each board is at crunching all that math. Let's upload the code now and check the results. And finally, well, both the classic ESP32 and the ESP32 S3 knocked it out in just 5 milliseconds. That's the kind of speed you get when there's a proper hardware FPU doing the heavy lifting. The ESP32 C3, on the other hand, took a whopping 181 milliseconds. Yeah, that's over 36 times slower, just because it has to crunch all those floating point numbers using software. Alright, so that's all for this video. These were just, you know, some very basic tests. And, uh, and of course, we can't judge the full power of all three boards just from this. The ESP32 S3, for example, actually has support for vector instructions, which we haven't even touched yet. And the ESP32 C3 might still have some advantages in other areas, uh, like low power, security features, or, well, benefits from the RISC-V architecture. There's still a lot more to compare, like Bluetooth performance, Wi Fi range, power consumption, peripheral IO, and all that good stuff, which we'll definitely dive into in the coming videos. So, yeah, stay tuned. And if you found this helpful, go ahead and like, share, and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next one.